line set in here. We got a culvert here. It runs up through here. This is a great, uh, mostly for mink, but we might get a raccoon here. It's just a blind set in the water. It's covered with the water. My trap's not too dark there. It didn't get dyed good, but it's okay. We're good here. Raccoon, muskrat, mink, mostly mink. We got an otter toilet here. They're coming out of this setback. They're coming down this trail. There's some here, some here, and some here. This is the first fresh otter sign I've seen down here this year. But you can see the three piles. They they uh, they use the same uh, areas routinely. And uh, this is the first sign I've seen down here of the otters this year. That's what that is. Otters come up out of the water, come up here, loop around, and this is their toilet area. Look for that for an otter. We got a couple sets down here. Maybe we got an otter. I doubt it. It takes a while. But that's what a toilet looks like. Sometimes they're they're plastered. This is just this is just last night's one otter type deal. We got a great big uh, male raccoon here. He's a big one. Um, we got a set here, a dirt hole, and another one here. I always double up if you can. Things worn in pairs, and sometimes you catch a possum and a fisher or whatever. If it's a real good spot, put two sets in. I'm going to take care of this raccoon. It's a nice, big adult raccoon. Come on, girls. We've got a nice fisher over here in this set. First set of the day, first check set of the fisher season. It's a nice fisher. Come on over. We'll take a look at it. This is an Adirondack fisher, which is all over New York State now. We're loaded with them. They're uh, tough on uh, on rabbits and uh, birds, and they're really tough on cats. They'll eat any cats they can get. They can claim a tree like a rocket. It's a nice looking fisher, probably a female. Um, that's the way it goes. Rough for the fisher, but that's the way life goes. We're going to dispatch this animal, and I'll show you how to make the set. All right. We got this just about set. Um, I caught this fisher in a dirt hole set, which is very common set. If you're not familiar with it, you probably will be. The soil's real wet here, so I'm using peat moss. And I also use a little bit of polyfill underneath the pan of the trap. The trap is right here. That's where I have it set. Try to make this set look natural. It emulates where a, a fox or another predator um, buried something. So we like a background if we can. Obviously, this was all tore up from catching that fisher. That's a female fisher. This year's fisher. They're very abundant in New York State now. They used to be very rare. Uh, now they're very abundant. They're great predators. You go up trees like rockets. We have a, a really good population of them. But make this thing look as natural as you can. Obviously, I got some peat moss here. This will work in any kind of weather. And. Uh, I like to blend in some regular dirt, but it's real tough if it's wet like this. So you want this thing to function. And this will function, that dry peat moss will function even if it freezes tonight pretty well. And I like to try to get, if you can, on these things. And this is a tough one here because we're right by a brook. This is a natural gut here. You can see where it goes down through. The brook runs up right through the middle of it. This little valley, little gut here in the brook. The animals have a tendency to want to follow this brook right up through here. Uh, normally we catch, you might catch anything here. Normally though it's raccoons. Uh, I've caught everything here, foxes, and once in a while you get a fisher. We're going to, uh, like I say, it's very hard to get this material, but see how I'm trying to take some of this natural material and mix it in with this so it's more natural. It holds down better. The peat's very... Um, soft and fluffy, so just make this set look realistic as possible. Get your stuff out of the way here. It's not really rocket science. Just try to be clean with your stuff. And uh, I am going to, I always don't do this, but you should put a pair of rubber gloves on when you're, uh, well, this pair's shot, but. Just when you're uh, fooling with the lure, don't wear the same gloves on this hand. I'm putting fox urine on the back, like a fox would. And I am going to 
Hit it with a shot of other lure. This happens to be uh, this happens to be shrimp, which I have pretty good luck with. And uh, I haven't got my favorite bait by far is muskrats. We haven't uh, muskrat season just opened today, so instead I got a regular rat. That's just what I'm using. That's just for me. Now this is important. By law, you're supposed to cover your bait. You're not supposed to leave it exposed. In New York State, anyways. And I'll tell you what. I like to put a couple guide sticks here, too, but don't go crazy. Uh, a fox or a coyote will be nervous about too many guide sticks. But I'll put a couple. Make this the obvious spot for him to put his foot. New York State, you can't have exposed bait. And uh, see, mine isn't exposed. It's covered up. It has to be covered by something. That's a good idea. Because some of the old trapping books and stuff, they would say sprinkle a whole bunch of duck feathers around or whatever. Uh, that's a bad idea. Because that will occasionally catch a fox or a, or a predator, the stuff you're trying to catch. But also, if you put feathers all around the set, which as a kid, there was some, you know, used to be legal. Uh, some of Hot Baker's books and everything, you know, take a whole bunch of feathers and sprinkle them around. And that's a great idea if you want to catch a blue jay, a crow, or some kind of winged predator, like a, a hawk or an owl. Don't do that. And you can't by law anyways, but don't do that, because that attracts all kinds of birds of prey. And, you know, blue jays and crows, stuff like that, they're interested in those feathers, don't do it. Don't sprinkle them all around. The, the things you're after with noses, we'll find that bait, we'll find that lure. So, uh, don't, don't do that. We're going to put this uh, fisher in a bag because I am also going to spray it with insecticide <laughs> because, well, they're very hard to see, but I'm sure she'll have 30, 40 ticks on her. So we put her in a bag now, and as soon as I get to the car, I'm going to spray her with insecticide all over to kill those ticks. Um, that's the way it is. But uh, they have all kinds of ticks. Deer ticks, dog ticks, tick, tick, tick. So all the land animals have these in our state now. But uh, as she goes, she's, good, she's a good looking picture. All right, Linda. Um, <laughs> this is a big female coon. She's in great shape. Uh, she's fat and healthy. Uh, we redid the set. Here's the set. Try to make it look natural. I used some peat moss in there. A few uh, guide sticks. Baited lure, ready to go again. Uh, she's a she's a good looking raccoon. They're not worth a lot of money, but we're going to do whatever we can with her, which we will show later. There, all these animals are very high on population level. So we'll get back to showing you how to handle this later. Well, we've got, the, we've got a nice fisher today. Whenever you get any of these land animals in New York State, you want to put them in a bag, and you will see, I can feel, probably has, see the ticks on that animal? These are the big dog ticks, but they guarantee the deer ticks are on them. I can feel 25, 30 ticks on this fisher. They're all over her neck. And see, look at them. And uh, they're all on the spots where the animal can't reach. So they're usually around the uh, ears, the back of the head, and the neck. This animal has a bunch of ticks on them, and you've got to figure that they do. So ticks are very dangerous to people and animals, but, I mean, look at that right there. You can't miss it. And these are the dog ticks, not deer ticks. I guarantee you there's deer ticks all over it. So well, as soon as you get to your car or wherever you're going, seal them up in a bag and spray them with a good tick killer. That's what I do, especially around the head, neck, ears. Spray them in there, put them in there. I tie them up for an hour or two. Leave them in there for a while. Let that stuff work. The stuff on the market now is a lot better than it used to be. It'll kill those ticks. But uh, definitely do that. Now, you'll find that the fishers, coyotes, gray foxes, red foxes, uh, those land animals are loaded. Water animals usually have none. 
picked uh, just a few and uh, the raccoons apparently pick them off. They have none and opossums have almost none. But to those, those main predators, bobcats, fishers, bull foxes and coyotes are loaded. And you want to seal that thing up and kill them ticks. Kill the ticks. No friends. You know, you call up April already and you send over and say, send me over a cameraman. No problem. And you get the worst person you could possibly get. It's shaky and all over the place. Right, cameraman? So you don't want this too crispy. Uh, after one day, and if it's pretty dry, you turn them inside out and dry them on the stretcher like that. They send me over the most alcoholic shaky cameraman I've ever seen in my life. So we're going to put this on this outside of these stretchers. We'll show these later. That's today's tip. We'll keep you posted. We're going to mix it up. Swamp Rat Dave out.